we broke it open in the third quarter, but didn't break it open. We got a little lead, 10 point lead, and we brought it right back again. And um, we were able to sustain that, actually, even though it was um, brought back down to one point. Um, you know, I thought for a return game off a road trip, it was. It's okay. Shot the ball poorly tonight. We'll have to do a better job. You got win number sixty. Cleveland got smoked, and now you're only one game behind them for the best record. Yeah. So you're gonna keep pushing here as hard as you've been, or ease off? Well, we have to make an attempt for it. I, I don't. I wouldn't feel good about it either with these players if we did. And we don't have to. You know, we really don't have to. Um, You'll threaten our well-being by doing it, I don't think. You know, we have some opponents that I consider dangerous. And tonight, when I walked in and talked to them, I said, Dallas got beat by Memphis. Utah got beat in their home court by Minnesota. New Orleans got beat by Golden State tonight. And, you know, we have the Los Angeles Clippers and the Sacramento Kings coming up as our next two games. So don't take them lightly. Be prepared. So do you feel like you're, you guys as a group respond better now to teams that try to beat you up physically like Houston was tonight, maybe more than you might have a year ago? Uh, better. We're better. Uh, we still want to look back at the referees, and I, I, don't, I don't want us to do that. I don't want to have guys you know, complaining. You know, don't think it was going to be that kind of a game, and the referees going to call that way. Then you got to get in the trenches and, and play that type of game and not look back. As you make a push, is there a shorter leash on the reserves on the bench if they continue to struggle? Uh, Band has seemed to be played and I can play well and got extra minutes. Is that kind of the way it's going to go in these final six? Well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to experiment with this a little bit. I uh, like the game Jordan played in, in uh, Milwaukee. He didn't shoot the ball well, but I like the game he played in Milwaukee. And so you know, he had you know the first option tonight to go off the bench, but I, I didn't like the, uh, you know, his, I thought his effort was, you know, he tried, but I thought some of the things he did were not what I want to see. It has to be done better. Um, you know, Sasha is on a you know, short release because he's sitting behind Kobe, and Kobe is necessary to come back and help us continue that. So you know, he didn't have a, an opportunity tonight to really get into it. And I told Luke that, you know, he hasn't had a good home game. He's played well on the road recently, but he hasn't played well on our home court for a while. I want him to get it back on our home court and give us that sustained effort that he can do. You left them on for a little bit after Houston you know, almost had basically tied up the game. Did you consider pulling them at that point? Yeah, I did. There was that jump ball sequence that uh, Jordan got beat to the basketball, and those, those are things that I really preach about. Uh, a lot of these kids haven't been through jump ball situations uh, a multitude of times, and so they don't know how to handle jump balls. And, you know, there's no excuse for it. We work on it in practice. And uh, those are things that, that we don't want to give up. Fast break points to teams on jump ball in our in our end of the court. So you know we had a little talk about that, but you know those those are there's some things there that you know this team has to learn the grit things that we have to learn. And I wanted this second unit to have to bear down a little bit at that point in the game and, and uh, you know kind of get it back together and hold their own space. But what's your take on the Yao uh, Gasol matchup? Well, uh, you know, Paul's been struggling with his shot. You know. Today he was, you know, even in practice, we we knew he wasn't shooting the ball particularly well, and we, we the way we wanted to use um, Powell versus Yao is to <laughs> you know keep him on the opposite side of the court, on the, the weak side of the court. Often, you know, you see my teams do that against Motombos and a variety of players that have dominance in the in the paint, and we didn't do that the first half. We put the ball in Powell's hands at the post and. Um, you know, he struggled, but, you know, the second half was different, you know, you know, he had some rhythm and he got the better of it. And I just wanted to see if Rick would match minutes with Yao out there on the floor because he was very tired. I knew that at one point Powell was going to have the advantage because he can run a little bit better. Well, there was an extensive New York Times Magazine article a couple months back by Michael Lewis about yes. how well Shane Battier plays Kobe Bryant. Uh, is there anything to that? I mean, Kobe seemed to hold his shooting hand a little bit extra, you know, when he made those threes after Battier hit that three. 
See if you it. Well, I gave that article to Kobe because I thought it was important for him not to know so much about, and I've told him this about Shane over the years, um, and I told him about his pension for taking on guys that you'll contest him and you know, at times making it uh, mano a mano. It takes us out of our game. And, you know, he was particularly good the last game against Houston. Now, this game, they didn't put our test on him, as you know. It was, it was Shane again that, that guarded him. And, you know, he does a good job. Um, and, you know, Kobe uh, measured it a lot this game. Uh, I thought did a great job of, you know, just playing the game that had to be played and playing within himself very well. Was this one of his better floor games? I mean, there were a lot of, you know, working the screens with Fish. And yeah. I, I was very good. And, you know, that was an advantage. We knew that Fish had a size advantage on their, their guards. And that screen roll was exceptional, exceptionally difficult for them to cover. Is there added value in wins over the teams you have remaining today, Houston and then Portland, Utah, teams you could face in the postseason, send one final message before that play I think it certainly does, uh, you know, drive home a message. You know, it's not the end all. Obviously, the games have to be played. But, you know, teams have that in the back of their mind that here it goes again, we're going to lose again. And, you know, that's, that's an issue I think that's important always have that kind of dominance.